So um, this is an overview of the presentation. I will first uh, talk about what's new in Diver Office and Diver Field, say a few words about the installation, and then I will present the Diver Field workflow in combination with Diver Office, have some final remarks, and after that I will uh, do a live demonstration of what I've uh, just presented, and after that I'll uh, have some time for questions and hopefully also answers. So what's new? Um, Diver Field is new. It's a new application uh, in addition to Diver Office, and it looks like uh, what is shown here. It is an application designed for touch screen displays and for use in the field, uh, which means that it has a high contrast so that the uh, windows are easily readable even if there's sunlight. Uh, and also you can use your fingers to navigate through the application so you don't need a mouse uh, to point to certain actions. The uh, application uh, starts with a status overview of all monitoring points, and they are shown as tiles. You can read settings and data from the diver, uh, record manual measurements that you're taking in the field, and you can also display downloaded data in a graph. Furthermore, you can do a real-time validation of the diver and manual measurement data. Uh, which means you can compare the two and you get instant feedback um, whether they match the limits that you have set. Once you've finished, you can export the collected data to an XML file that can be read, for example, in Excel. Units are metric uh, or US units, uh, like pound and inch, um, and uh, you set those uh, units in the Diver Office application. It's currently available in two languages, Dutch and English, and depending on what you've set in Diver Office, it will, uh, the application will show in Dutch or English. If you set uh, Diver Office to anything else than Dutch, it will show in English. So <clears throat> just a few words on what Diver Office is not. Uh, it's not a replacement of Diver Office, it's an addition to Diver Office. So, for example, you cannot start or program divers, you cannot create projects, do barometric compensation, or export data. This is still something you have to do uh, within the Diver Office application. For the new release of Diver Office 2018, there's a few uh, new things. One is that the default project time is standard time, uh, which means that you don't have to worry about uh, daylight savings or summer and winter time. Uh, we have adopted a new database. We moved from SQL CE to SQL Lite so that we can support other platforms than uh, Windows in the future. A new water level unit, the millimeter was added. Um, used, uh, you start Diver Office at the same position as when you closed it. And um, for the smart interface cable, um, which I will come to later, um, it also shows some more details when there's a communication error. The last thing that I want to mention is that you can copy CTD Diver Calibration history data to the clipboard. And when you connect to a CTD diver, uh, you will find the Cal history button in the diver window. You click that, and then the uh, calibration history graph will open. And if you right click on the graph, you will have uh, two options copy a graph to clipboard, which uh, copies a, uh, an image of the uh, graph the clipboard that you then can paste in, for example, Word. And the other option is to copy the data to clipboard uh, that you then can copy, for example, in Excel. And so that's the last feature I want to mention of Diver Office. And a few words on the uh, smart interface cable. It's a new cable. Uh, um, 
that you can use to read data from divers deployed on a data cable. Uh, either it's a DXT or a DDC cable. Uh, for the DDC cable, there is an adapter available. Uh, and you can directly connect this cable to the DXT cables. The USB plug of the smart interface cable has on the opposite side of what's shown in the picture, uh, so that's shown on the right hand side, uh, a few LED indicators that indicate whether it's ready to uh, send uh, and receive data, then a green uh, light will come on. Uh, it will also show when it's receiving or sending data to the diver. And there's also a little check light that uh, indicates uh, whether a cable is connected and whether or not a diver can be detected and yet of the cable. <clears throat> and one of the features of this cable is uh, that in diver field you can also read the barometric data. There's a barometric data sensor uh, inside the interface cable which you can then use to uh, do an instant compensation of a real-time diver measurement. So once you've downloaded the setup from this URL, uh, or just go to the website and uh, look for the diver office uh, or diver field page and uh, click on the download button. Uh, if you run the setup file, it will give you the option to install diver office and diver field or only diver office and the rest of the installation is uh, fairly self-explanatory. After the installation, you have to run Diver Office first um, uh, before you can start Diver Field. Uh, if you have an older version from Diver Office, for example, 2017, the database will be upgraded first and you will see this little window and the upgrade may, may take a few minutes uh, up till about 30 minutes for very large databases. And for large databases, uh, you should think of one gigabyte or so. So then the diver field workflow. Uh, so <clears throat> the easiest way is to create a monitoring point file, uh, a CSV file, and you can uh, do that in Excel and then export it as a CSV file. And then uh, an example of the CSV file is shown here. What you at least need is a name of the monitoring point, and the other three parameters are optional. So you can enter a cable length, uh, a maximum difference. That's the maximum difference that you allow between a manual measurement and a diver measurement, and a top of casing value. Then uh, open Diver Office, you create a new project and import the CSV file through the import menu and then click on monitoring points and then there is a wizard that will help you to import the data. Once that's completed, you can <coughs> close Diver Office and go to Diver Field and you will see the project uh, that you've just imported the monitoring points from and all the monitoring points will show up as dark blue tiles in diver field. So <clears throat> um, when you arrive at a well site and uh, you connect to a diver with the cables, um, then you click on the connect button and diver field will uh, read the data from the diver and simultaneously you can enter a manual measurement value in here. If you're using the smart interface cable, the barometric pressure field will be populated automatically and the cable length will be taken from the database. Uh, and that's the value you've just imported. So if the difference between the diver and manual measurement is within the limit that you set, then you will get a green check mark uh, here. And if that value exceeds the limit, then you will get a red exclamation mark. If you're done um, reading diver data and entering uh, the data here, then you click on the 
save data button and you will go back to the um, the overview uh, of all the monitoring points and then the screen will look like this and you will see that the monitoring points you've just visited uh, becomes light blue and there's a green check mark that all data was entered correctly uh, and once you've completed all the monitoring points you can uh, click the finish and export all data button and then an XML file will be created that uh, contains all the data that you've entered and it will reset all the tiles to dark blue again so then the next time you go into the field and uh, you start with a fresh um, fresh uh, screen here again some remarks uh, I recommend you run only one application at a time because it makes use of the same database Diver field, as I mentioned before, will use the settings as set in Diver Office for units and language, uh, which is available in Dutch and in English. And there's also a help available in Diver field. When you have Diver field open, you press F1 to access its help. And one final remark is that Diver Office 2018 and Diver field will not work under Windows XP. And now for a short demonstration. So I'm now upgrading from a 2017 database and it's a small database. So this will go fairly quickly. It will open Dive for Office and now I'm going to create a new project which I will call Demo. And then uh, I will import my uh, monitoring points file. And here you can set delimiters uh, for your file if you're using the uh, file from uh, Excel that, uh, that runs on the same computer, then there's nothing you have to do here. Uh, um, it will also show if there's uh, errors in the data. In this case, there's none. I'll click next. And then here you can match the fields uh, in your file to the database files uh, uh, fields. And you can also select the unit uh, of the uh, import file. And once you're satisfied, there's no errors, uh, you can click import and the data will be imported. And I have a project with uh, these uh, new monitoring points. So when I select a monitoring point, you can see cable length here is imported, top of facing value and also the max difference between manual measurement and diver. So this is now all set. And now I can go to Diver Field. And it will open with the project that I just closed in Diver Office. Now um, I have connected a diver through the smart interface cable. So I click Connect. And it will start downloading data, as you can see uh, here at the bottom. And now I can also enter a manual measurement. So when I type um, 420, uh, um, then you will see that the difference between the diver and the manual measurement is within the limit. If I uh, increase this number to 429, then you will see that this uh, number exceeds it and that I get a red exclamation mark. So I'll go back to 420 and I click the Save Data button. Um, look, let me show you the data first. So this is the data that was just downloaded. Uh, I can save the data. And now you see that uh, the tile of the monitoring point I just downloaded data from has turned light blue and has a green check mark. If there's any mistake or I want to redo, I can now click Connect. But if I've been away uh, from that location already, 
then I can just click on the or tap on the monitoring point and then I'm able to change the menu measurement data here. Um, so I'll go back to the overview. Um, now, assume that I finished all the monitoring points uh, and I want to finish this uh, round of data collection. I'll click the finish and export all data button. I'll hit export and uh, then the file can be shown here. And that file can then be imported in Excel. I'll start Excel. And then <coughs> so I have data for only one monitoring point in this case, but uh, uh, if I fill out all the data points, then there will be data for all the monitoring points here. Um, the time series data from the divers will not be imported uh, or exported to the XML file. They will still be present in Diver Office from where you can export them. And so that ends my uh, demonstration of Diver Field and Diver Office here. I'll uh, go back to my presentation. Um, and then there's only one slide left, which is the uh, questions. So, so if there's no questions, I would like to thank you for attending this webinar. Thank you.